and welcome to this week's vlog. Uh, did I forget to film an intro this week? Yes, but my parents were visiting, so we're gonna give me a pass on that. So I'm filming this after all the other footage has been filmed. It's fine, we're going with it. This week, my parents were in, so I take you with me to Vermont Sheep and Wool. It was my first time attending the festival, so I've got some clips of all of the adorable animals and some of the vendors. And then I also have a little bit of a haul from what I bought at Sheep and Wool. Then I have a few clips of us hiking in Vermont. It was almost peak foliage season. So it was pretty as far as the leaves, but it's kind of gloomy and cloudy most of the days, but we still got in a couple really great hikes while my family was in. And then I did a quick trip to New York City to help my parents get on the train to get back to Virginia. They'd never really taken Amtrak before all the way from Vermont. So I helped them out with that. They'd never navigated kind of the New York City train stations. So they got to experience both Moynihan and Penn Station. So I took them down there. I visited with a friend uh, really quickly while I was in New York and then came back and I got a little bit of spinning done this week, so you will see me plying. And then I finally got to start on my mini series, Sew Along. And I was only, I think, six, eight blocks behind by the time I started. But I've got some footage of that as well. So enjoy, and I will see you all in a little bit. Since this was my first year at Vermont Sheep and Wool, I spent a lot of time just kind of walking around and seeing all of the different vendors. Like this one had a lot of Icelandic wool, which was super cool. And then seeing all of the animals and the different farms that are in Vermont. I know there are a couple that are close to me, so it might be really cool to get to visit one sometime but I really loved the festival overall and the layout of the festival. And then I want to show you really quickly a clip of this woman that is spinning some Angora straight from her rabbit. It was so cute and she was really fun to get to talk to and she told us a little bit about her spinning and the rabbit. Oh. <laughs> oh, uh, and, yeah, I think that's picture worthy. And, and you're picking stuff off of yeah. the rabbit? And They're very, very ready to shed. <laughs> All right. This, this it is comes right off. Photo worthy. <laughs> and as you can see, it's not bothering him at all. I really loved seeing that rabbit. That was so cute. Uh, but this is one of my new favorites, Fiber Stash Dye Works. I have a couple of their skins of yarn in my haul. They were one of my absolute favorites that I found at the festival. I also went over to the exhibit hall where the jurored entries were. So it was really fun to see who had won first place, what the different entries looked like, and get some inspiration there as well. And then I did a little bit more shopping.
another one of my favorite parts of the festival and all Sheep and Wolf festivals are the sheepdog trials. I don't know if you're going to be able to hear the whistles and calls that the shepherd is doing, but here's some footage of the sheepdog working. And then to finish out the day, we headed to the Sugar Shack and got some maple donuts and maple creamies because my parents had never tried one. I wanted to show you the haul from the Fiber Fest. One of the things that I got was one of the t-shirts from Vermont Sheep and Wool. I also got one for a good friend of mine who I've always gone to the Montpelier Sheep and Wool Festival in Virginia with. She's um, an amazing person. She's like a second mom to me. And that festival was canceled this year because of the hurricane. And she was super disappointed because it was going to be her first year teaching a formal class. She's taught spinning for years and years and years. Uh, she taught her daughter to spin and her daughter is who taught me to spin. I got my first Actually, my only two spinning wheels are from her, so she's just the most wonderful person. So I grabbed a shirt for her as well, since her festival was canceled, and I got a matching one. Uh, a couple of yarns that I got, I found this, um, all of the dyers that were there were new to me, because this is my first year at Vermont Sheep and Wool, and previously I've not really lived anywhere near a lot of New England dyers. So I found a lot of new to me dyers that I'm super excited about. One of those is Ball and Skein, and I'll insert some close-ups of this, but I picked up this, I'm gonna say worsted weight. Yeah, worsted weight in Providence. And I think I'm gonna make a cowl out of this. It's 100% uh, Merino, super soft. And I really want a couple solid colored pieces um, of knitwear that I can wear that go with most of my outfits. So I wear a lot of dark and neutral colors. So I thought this would be really great for a cow and maybe a hat if I have enough. There's a kitten running around. You can probably hear his little jingle bell collar. Yarn is not for kittens. Another dyer that I found was Fiber Stash Dye Works. And oh my gosh, I am in love with everything that they, I have to take the yarn from the kitten. Nope. That they dye. The base that they use for their sock yarn is like my perfect base. It's 80-20 uh, merino nylon and it's a two ply. And it's just the base that I like best for my socks. I used to uh work for an indie dyer and this is the same base that they used for their um uh, yarns and i just got addicted to this for sock yarn so i got this halloween colored one which is called roller derby uh, but i love the pink and orange and black it's very uh sweet and spooky to me so this is going on my needles later this week probably so almost finished with the socks i'm working on so love this and then they also had tweed sock yarn which i've not seen before and my spouse loves tweed anything tweed so my mom bought this sock yarn for them and i'm going to make a pair of socks for them for christmas so this is their christmas present for mom slash me and then i got this gray tweed one for me because again i want some more neutrals that i can wear um, out that go with a lot of my outfits. So I really, really love this. So I can't wait to knit all three pairs 
of these socks maybe this year we'll see uh how much knitting time i get for sock yarn but absolutely love everything that fiber stash does i'll have them linked down in the description box but they are one of my new absolute favorite dyers so definitely check their stuff out so that's everything i got at the sheep and wool festival i really enjoyed it and i think what i'm going to do because it's actually the same weekend as the montpelier sheep and wool in virginia I'm probably going to end up alternating years. So this year I went to Vermont Sheep and Wool. Next year I'm going to try to go to the one in Virginia so I can see those friends because we used to make it like a great fun weekend. We would have amazing dinners at my friend's house and her parents would cook great food for us and we would spend some time in and around the Charlottesville area. I'd get to go for a run in one of my favorite areas. And it was just a really wonderful weekend of catching up with friends who feel like family and spending some time together in the fall. So, uh, yeah, so I think I'm going to be alternating between Vermont Sheep and Wool and Montpelier, Virginia. So that should be fun. So next year, hopefully, I will have a vlog for you from Montpelier. But that's it for Vermont Sheep and Wool. And enjoy the footage from the rest of this week including our quick trip to New York to get my parents on the train, a few hikes around Vermont, and I finally got started on my mini series with the actual fabric. So enjoy that. <laughs> While my parents were visiting, we went on a couple of different hikes in Vermont, uh, just near where I live, and I'm really happy that they were able to get out and see some of Vermont in the fall. Wednesday, we took the train from Vermont into New York City so that my parents could catch a very early morning train on Thursday back to Virginia. And I did get a little bit of knitting done on the train. And then our next and final station stop is New York Penn Moynihan Train Home. I am in New York City right now and I dropped my parents off at the train. They left about four this morning, so I'm really tired, but I'm going to go over and see my friend who lives in the city and we're gonna grab breakfast and I'm gonna do some work from his place because I can't take any more days off of work. <laughs> so I'm going to head over there and then I catch my train back to Vermont at around two o'clock this afternoon. So I'll get some knitting on the train done and some work. So I'm gonna take you along with me.
Good morning. It is Saturday morning and I am back in Vermont. And sorry if you can hear some background noise outside. They're doing some construction. Um, so I'll keep this short, but I'm back. My parents are back in Virginia. I was exhausted after having a visit for a week. It was super fun. I'm glad they, they got to see Vermont in the fall, but now I'm getting caught up on real life and the kitten is running around, so sorry if you can hear that <laughs> as well. But today I'm going to finish plying the project I have on my shop match list, get the yarn soaked and set, and maybe start a new project as well. And then I need to get caught up on the mini series so long. Basically, I need to start over on that. So I am six blocks behind so I don't know how many I'll be able to get done this weekend but I'm gonna try so it's a busy weekend and I'm gonna finish my coffee and get started When I'm spinning, I always separate my fiber into two equal uh, weighted balls before I start spinning, one for each spool, but it never fails. One spool always ends up with more yardage than the other, so you can see uh, one of these has a little bit more. And as I spin, one of them runs down quite a bit faster. So I end up chain plying the last bit of that purple spool. So here's a clip of what chain plying looks like. I did notice that when I was chain plying, it's been a long time since I've done that, and I was over spinning quite a bit on this section of the yarn, but you know what? It's fine. I honestly don't know what I will use this for in a project anyway, and I don't mind that it looks a little bit messy. It's only probably about 20 yards or so. You can see on the bobbin here that it's overspun but hey you know what it's finished and that's better than sitting in my stash and not being used I got the plying done and set the yarn and I was finally able to start working on the mini series so along. And one of the things I learned when I was doing my practice blocks was that pre-cutting a bunch of fabric into one inch strips and then sub-cutting those into one by two, one by three, and one by five sections was super helpful. So I did that for all of the colored, rainbow colored fabrics, and then I arranged them in a rainbow order beside my sewing machine so I could pick them up as I went and was able to 
make the blocks a lot more quickly this time than when I was doing my practice block. One of the other things that I did before I started the real block was to change out my presser foot to a clear presser foot. I knew I should have done that when I was doing the practice block and I didn't. And let me tell you, changing this to the clear presser foot helped so much. It was so much easier to see the lines on the itty bitty tiny foundation paper and I could get a lot better accuracy with the clear presser foot. So I'm glad that I did that. Another thing that I learned during my practice block was that I have three new best friends. One of those is the add an eighth ruler that you just saw me use. And then the seam roller, which is my absolute new favorite. And then my good friend Nikki told me to get a glue stick to use for the fabric and I found one at my local quilt shop that is really tiny and fantastic for just this project. So I absolutely love this. Thanks to Nikki for telling me to use a glue stick. It really, really helped with the tiny piecing. I'm really glad that I did the practice block because I learned so much and I definitely think I have my process down now for completing these mini blocks. So I'm really excited with how this first one turned out and I can't wait to get the rest of them done and be all caught up on this challenge. So that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the Fiber Festival and my quick trip to New York. And I hope you're excited to see more of the mini series so long because that will be coming up in next week's vlog. But thanks so much for watching. Definitely let me know in the comments what crafts you're working on, what projects you have going. I would love to see what you're up to. So let me know in the comments and have a great week. Mm -hmm.